In Pro's Habit, we'll watch DRX Chovis mid Lucien to go over some tips and details that we normally miss. Watching Pro's Habit content will naturally give you a better understanding of the game. In Kespa's Cup, Lucien has the highest ban rate. In solo rank, however, Lucien is weak against Pantheon in all tiers though. Let's see how Chovy overcomes this matchup. Like a blink of an eye's not enough She'd rather be staying for days now I'd rather fix it than mess up again She'd rather be burning it all now I know we will end up in anger I don't think we grew up, we just became older She's aiming her words, ready to fire I don't think that bullets will bring back desire This matchup starts with Pantheon's empowered spear on Lucian what stands out is that Chovy always learns his first skill based on the opponent's skill. As he checks the spear, he learns Q to push the way faster and still can trade with Pantheon. He doesn't land his double shot right away, but he pretends to land it on Pantheon by moving forward before he uses a minions to push the way. Chovy always follows the basic rules in lane. Attacking when the enemy last hits a minion, when only you can hit him. Then he backs up right away to get out of range minion's aggro. He basically got enemy's minion's aggro on him, so that their minions don't push his wave, but his minions are pushing. This happened in less than 10 seconds. This seems very minuscule, but imagine your Pantheon with Q against PTA Lucian. If he lands a double shot on you, the third shock procs PTA and puts you with a very bad trade, so you'll naturally sit back. Of course this kind of play has a downside. If you push the first wave so fast like this, you'll have an advantage on trade. The rule of thumb in League is that you always have more advantage if you push the wave. However, Echo can level 2 gank mid right after red. And you might die if Echo comes when Pantheon hits level 2 and has a stun. So try to trade as much as possible before Pantheon hits level 2. Remember to trade more actively when you are pushing. If you trade it well early, Echo can't just walk up mid. He has to consider a counter gank, but also he might die against Ignite Lucian with 2 minion waves. Then as always, Chovy puts down a war trinket on one side during a big pushing wave, usually at the cannon wave. This ward gives you 3 possible situations since our jungle is at wolves. Since Lucian puts down a trinket a little too late, it's hard to tell if Echo took golems or not. You need to put down a ward by 220 at most to have a concrete information, but you can still tell that Echo's on blue side of jungle. Ward trinket here at this time tells you how the enemy jungle is jungling. You can share this information to your team by pinging a lot of missing pings. It's like sending your SCV to scout enemy's build in StarCraft. You could put this war here since you had a lane advantage and you are pushing. Pantheon plays around the top side of mid since Lucian knows the raptors are gone, so he's just staying closer to his jungle.
Then Lucian plays on boss side of jungle to prevent Echo's gank from topside. Chovy pushes the third wave first, so that he can back up the topside struggler. If Pantheon decides to go to the topside struggler, he'll have to give up some CS. In Challenger's games, early lane or jungle advantage is a huge winning factor. So Pantheon gives up the wave and backs up the Scuzzler. Even if Chobi dies during the fight, the wave will be pushed to his side since he pushed the wave earlier to the enemy's side. He all planned this to minimize his risk of losing the fight. As you see the wave, if he died, the wave will be pushed. Even though Echo got the Scuttler, our Renekton came first and got a kill. Chovy also faced Pantheon and killed him since he was already kinda low. At this point, the top side of the game is kind of over. But let's continue watch Chovy's lane management and recall timing. After killing Pantheon, Chovy pushes the wave even though the wave is getting pushed. You might question that wouldn't it be good for Pantheon because he can come back and get some CS? Well, you have to see the next wave is a cannon wave. Minions are already on the enemy's side, so their cannon wave will reach mid faster. Then Cannon Wave will push our minions so fast that you will lose some CS and lose some turret health. So you have to push the wave right before a Cannon Wave. Don't try to push more waves and miss your recall timing. Let's see what happens if you play like Chobi. Blue Team's wave halted the turret, which means the wave will be formed toward Blue Team's side. Pantheon can either last hit minions and push slowly, or push the wave fast. But he can't push fast because Lucian can get all the CS. Unless Pantheon wants to get visions with his jungle, he'll last hit minions and burn some of his wave. Then what can Lucian do? At only 4 minutes, Lucian is ahead of almost 3 waves of CS. He will lose a few at this wave, but it's not a big deal because the wave is getting pushed. Chovy decides to get a boss side vision for the boss scuttler before he goes to mid. If Echo didn't come to boss scuttler, Dragon can just take it. But even if you took the boss scuttler like this, the ward restricts Echo's boss side movement as well as Pantheon's boss side movement. Then, if you start to slow push back a king, Pantheon has to either stay far up or stay all the way back and waste all the CS. 
He can't just run boss straight up because of the ward, so it's easy to tell where he goes. Blue team got topside vision earlier, and red team got boss side vision now, so bot laners feel much safer. Now let's continue from where we left off. Pantheon is staying far up due to the wave, so he has to think of Gragas. Then Echo has to stay around mid and watch his back. And this one single brilliant ward screwed up Echo's plan. This is kinda funny. Pantheon warded this push, which was shown by Squire's Plum by Gragas at 336. When this ward died, it became Gragas Zombie Ward. So Echo's brilliant plan to gank mid was screwed by this one single ward. Most people know that you only get zombie wards when you destroy wards. However, if you detect a ward with a Scryer's Plum, the ward becomes your zombie ward when it dies. It's sometimes better to let it die instead of destroying it and let the enemy know where the zombie ward is. Then the enemy might believe there is no vision. Chovy knew this, so he didn't destroy the ward when he could. This makes Blue Team think that Red Team never warded this push. So, junglers who use domination runes can be more strategic with zombie ward. Cleed and Canyon use Zombie Ward quite often. Since Gragan knows where Echo is, he farms Raptors to counter gank. Lucian knows that Pantheon has both summoner spells and enemy CZ combo, so he stays on boss side to just avoid a gank. If you see the minimum right now, Gragas is going to enemy's jungle. So Chovy stays on top side right away to back up faster. Let's watch the next play. Chovy sees where Echo is, but he doesn't retreat right away. Watch what he does. First, Chovy is one level ahead. If he retreated as soon as he saw Echo, Echo could tell where the ward was and remove the control ward in the top bush. But instead, Chovy responds to Pantheon's movement and Echo's W cast time. He acts like he is naive and didn't know anything about Echo. Even now, he is staying far from Echo since Echo is not detected again by the control ward. This makes the opponent believe that Pantheon was just too obvious, and Chovy could save the control ward. Also, Echo's jungle route is shown. He could react to Pantheon's stun more easily, since he knew Echo was around. After having a good trade and checking Pantheon recalls, he doesn't try to get Plating Gold or wait for the next wave since the next wave is a Cannon Wave. Remember earlier? It's better to push a wave before the Cannon Wave. It's been only 7 minutes and kill scores are only 1 to 2, but the top side of the game is already over. After this, the game just gets one-sided. 
Let's summarize what we learned from today's pose habit. 1. Trade when enemy is last hitting a minion, and put more pressure if you have any mech. 2. Predict enemy's jungle based on where your jungler is, and put a ward at 220. Just say Raptor's ward. 3. Push the wave to the turret by 315, so that you can help your jungler at Scuttler. 4. Not just pushing the wave, but use a cannon wave to get a vision for your jungler, and stay on the side where you have the vision. 5. Zombie ward is placed when you detect a ward with a Squire's Plum and it dies. Last, try to waste enemy's jungle's time by faking your move with some distance. 